What are you buying there, stranger? Hello there, welcome to the Prop Shop. We're checking out the latest and greatest props out there. On this week's Prop Shop, we'll take a look at the real firearm behind the RE4 Remix Stingray. Games have sure come a long way since 2005 and see how this one stacks up to the game model. Let's go take a look. Before we get started, warning, firearms can be extremely dangerous, so make sure you get the proper licensing and training pertaining to your country. And of course, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more prop shops and more. All right, let's get started. If you're Canadian like me, we're gonna start off with proof to make sure that our firearm is not loaded. Of course, make sure your firearm is in safe. We're gonna point the firearm in the right direction, remove the magazine, observe the chamber, Verify the feed path, and then of course, examine the bore. All right, now that we know our firearm is not loaded, we can finally take the trigger lock off. Starting off here, my SL8 is newer than the one in the game. It's the SL8-4, where the one in the game is an SL8-1. Besides being a later generation, you'll notice a few things different about my firearm compared to Leon's. Starting off with my Dash 4, you'll notice that mine has a double stack magazine, where Leon's has a cutaway here for a single stack magazine. Also, my handguard has little holes for M-lock rails, as well as a bottom Picatinny rail. you also notice one minor detail in the game that the real guns do not have, which is a really exaggerated slant here for the trigger guard. But beyond that, the game does a really good job of modeling what a real one actually looks like. The SL8 is a rifle designed in the late 90s in Germany from HNK. Chambered in 5.56, it's a semi-automatic rifle that's mostly made of composite in the body. Of course, in the game, the merchant only sells it for 30,000 pesetas, which in real life is only $260 Canadian. The real one costs a bit more than that at 2,500. Not to mention, once you start upgrading it with things like you do in the game, things can get a whole lot more expensive. A fellow like yourself should notice the difference right away. Starting off with the scope, mine is not a thermal sensor like the ones you see in the game for the regenerators. Mine is a standard prism scope. And here with the bipod, I added a bipod here for stability so you can shoot it while on the bench. But beyond the personalized accessories that you see in the real world that you won't see in the game, this game gets the firearm right down to the T. Starting off with the free floating barrel. Just like the game, the barrel does not touch the handguard. Because in real life, handguard comes right off, free floating. Here it exposes the 20 inch cold forged steel barrel with a 1 in 7 twist. Which from the game you can't really tell, but this barrel is extremely heavy. And here there's a short stroke piston here that drives the bolt back for its semi-automatic function. And not that you can really tell from the game, this firearm is mostly made of composite, which is supposed to make it light, but in my experience, it's heavier than some of the other rifles that I've fired. But compared to 2005's RE4, the RE4 remake really takes the details to a whole new level. As Leon carries this gun around, you actually see all the hollow parts in the stock, as well as the thumb hole design right down to a T. But the real question is, how does it fire compared to this game? When loaded, this can be approximately close to 10 pounds, most of the weight being in the front where the barrel is. So the fact that Leon can draw it real quick and center it on his target might not be as realistic as it looks in the game. Only if I was as strong as Leon. And of course, the thumb hole stock may not be for everybody. But I personally am starting to like it as it grows on me. The great thing about this firearm is that it's fully ambidextrous, all the way from the safety switch down to the charging handle. The great thing about the charging handle is that you can lock it whenever you like, just by pulling it and pushing it down. Of course, pull back on the bolt and just let go. To lock the bolt open, there is a bolt hold right where the trigger is. All I gotta do is pull the bolt back and then push up to lock the bolt down. 
But like the game, the weight really helps with the recoil and it's easily manageable compared to some of the other rifles I've shot. And just like the game in Leon's Reloading, the mag release is right there. So you'll slide your magazine under, squeeze it in, and drop the magazine. Also like the game, your slings are right here and right here. Of course in Canada, all firearms are limited to five cartridges per magazine. So you can't upgrade like you would with a merchant. Of course another thing that won't change is the power of the firearm. The speed and accuracy you can work on yourself to get yourself into Resident Evil shape. So what can I say? It is quite an amazing rifle. I'm sure we won't look as cool as Leon firing one of these, but that's just my opinion. Are you a gun enthusiast? Have you shot one of these? What do you think about buying one of these for yourself? And if you're a gamer, how do you think this compares to the game? Leave a comment below and let me know. And for now, I'm going to take this back to the range and take it out for a spin.